Hello, welcome to the Roy Rogers News Channel. Thank you so much for watching. All right, today, let's go ahead and dive into Hydragon. And Hydragon is the three-headed dragon with a whopping special attack stat of 125. And before I dive into this Pokemon here, I would like to thank Spartacus GD for proofreading the script for Hydragon. And I would also like to thank Rody Walk for proofreading the previous competitive analysis video for Infernape. And I should note that the reason why Roadie Walk is not co-hosting with me is because he has not proofread the Hydragon script. And I don't think it's really fair for me to feature Roadie Walk when he has not proofread the Pokemon. So I want to feature Roadie Walk when we discuss a Pokemon together, so that way both of us are on the same wavelength when we do a video together. So that is why Rody Walk is not here. But don't worry, Rody Walk is likely to be here on another video at some point. And let me know how you like the Magnezone character. I can reintroduce him if you want, but too bad that he got earthquaked by that Garchomp. I mean, Robo King did try to save him in the YouTube comment section, but it was a little too late. Garchomp already did its work, so hopefully we can revive that Magnezone sometime soon. Alright, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into Hydreigon right now. Let's go ahead and pop up the big computer, and let's go ahead and check Hydreigon's stats. Oh boy, the very first slide is a pretty big slide, but that is due to a lot of editor's notes here. So we're going to dive into Hydreigon and the editor's notes right now. All right, so the tier is OU, its typing is dark, Dragon and Dark, and its resistances are Ghost, Fire, Water, Grass, Electric, and Dark. And the weaknesses are Fighting, Bug, Ice, and Dragon. Now, I should note that the reason why the typings are no longer colored is due to the fact that there are some colors that blend into the slide. So that is why I'm no longer coloring it. Although, as a brief note, this slide is special. This slide is completely black and the text is white. And that is due to Hydreigon having black fur and I wanted the slide to blend in better with Hydreigon. Alrighty! Now there is a lot of editor's notes I should read. And I would also like to thank Mighty Michelle for helping me out with researching the ring target. Turns out that the ring target does not activate for ground type moves. So that means Hydreigon can still levitate when ground type moves are being used against it. So I would like to thank Mighty Michelle for helping me out in researching the ring target's capacity. Let's go ahead and read the rest of the disclaimers, but I thought I should note that and thank you, Mighty Michelle, for your contribution to the research for Hydreigon. All right, so their immunity is ground and psychic. Unless you're holding a ring target, in this case, then psychic attacks will make contact. Also, if your opponent uses Miracle Eye on you, then Psychic moves will make contact. If Gravity or Smackdown is used, then Ground-type moves will make contact. Also, if your opponent has the ability Mold Breaker, then Ground-type moves will make contact. I did not include Turbo Blaze nor Turavolt since these abilities are exclusive to Reshiram and Zacharam, respectively. In this unlikely scenario, ground type moves will make contact. If your opponent uses gas or acid on you, then ground type moves will make contact. Lastly, if you're holding an iron ball, then ground type moves will make contact. Do not baton pass an ingrain effect to Hydreigon because you will make Hydreigon vulnerable to ground type attacks. Oof. This was very important. I know that you may be in those situations. Although the Terravolt and the Turbo Blaze situation you may not be in. Let's go ahead and read the ability. Only one ability. Levitate. The ability Levitate will give you full immunity to all ground type moves. Unless there are the exceptions which I mentioned in the first slide. And now for the base stats. So let's go ahead and read the base stats for Hydreigon. I should note that Hydreigon is known for its special attacking prowess, even though Hydreigon's attack stat is one point higher than Infernape. But Infernape K 
can better use its attack stat. Hydreigon can't really use its attack stat too well. But I can get to that a little later. So the base stats for Hydreigon are as follows. So HP is 92, attack is 105, defense is 90, special attack is 125, special defense is 90, and its speed is 98. You might have noticed that the speed stat is 98, and that's pretty fast for some Pokemon. But Hydreigon, I would like to classify as a little lower in the speed race of Pokemon. There are a lot of other Pokemon in OU that are faster than Hydreigon, so just to give you a brief example of Pokemon that are faster, you have things like Gengar, which could make contact with its Focus Blast, and it could be fatal against Hydreigon. You also have Starmie that's faster, and if Hydreigon is at yellow health and if Starmie uses Ice Beam, then Hydreigon is in danger of fainting. You also have Jolteon that has a higher speed stat. And you have Weavile, which is dangerous Pokemon for Hydreigon to handle. So, there are a fair amount of Pokemon that are faster. Oh, and how can I forget Garchomp? Garchomp is very dominant in OU right now. And the base speed stat for Garchomp is a whopping 102. Garchomp is a lot faster than Hydreigon by just a few points. And Garchomp is usually invested in speed. If your Hydreigon is in a face-to-face -face with Garchomp, it's best to switch out. Or you can predict Garchomp coming in and then you can try to attack Garchomp. And if you're the choice Scarf variant, then you can try to knock out Garchomp. If Garchomp is at yellow health, don't try to knock out Garchomp if it's in the green health because otherwise you might be disappointed because there are a fair amount of Garchomps that also have some bulk investment as well, so be careful when you deal with Garchomp. All right, I know that that's a lot to explain for Hydreigon, but I thought I should give you the background for Hydreigon before I dive into the sets. So since I gave you a brief background about Hydreigon and the environment around Hydreigon, let's go ahead and dive into sets that you can invest in for Hydreigon. So let's go ahead and start off with the first variant for Hydreigon. This set, I would say, is somewhat common for Hydreigon. It's not too common, but it's somewhat common. And this set is called the Hydra's Choice Assault. And the IVs are as follows. HP is 25+, plus. attack doesn't really matter. Defense is 25+, plus. its special attack is 31, its special defense is plus 25 and its speed is 31. Its EVs are 6 HP, 252 special attack, 252 speed. Its nature is timid, so plus speed minus attack. And its moves are Dark Pulse, Dragon Pulse, U-Turn, and then for the fourth move, you have either Flamethrower or Focus Blast. Its item can be either Choice Scarf or Choice Specs. And then its ability is Levitate. Now, as a brief note here, Specs, the Choice Specs is used for Wall Breaker, while the Scarf can help you win the Speed War against Gengar and Starmie, implying that they don't have a Choice Scarf themselves. Choice Scarf may be able to give you the edge when you're fighting against Gengar or Starmie. Or if you're having problems with bulky Pokemon that can take some special attacks, then I would say that the Choice Specs would be a better item for Hydra. These two items are really interchangeable, it just depends on what role you want your Hydreigon to take on. In the Choice Specs is a Choice Locked item that boosts your special attack by plus 50%, but you're locked on that one move once you use that move, and the only way to get out of that is if you switch. Same principle for Choice Scarf, except you're boosting speed and not special attack. Now let's go ahead and discuss the moves here. So you have Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse is good for Pokemon like Runiclus or Cophagregis or Starmie or Gengar. Dark Pulse is also good for Jellicent as well because Jellicent is part ghost and you can hit it super effectively. And Dark Pulse has a chance to flinch your target so Jellicent can't land anything and then you can finish it out with Dark Pulse. And Jellicent's Ice Beams are not enough to knock out Hydreigon. So you can use Dark Pulse and knock out Jellicent if you're having Jellicent issues. Dark Pulses for a lot of different targets. Dark Pulse is a pretty good move for Hydreigon, and it also has a stab bonus since it's Hydreigon is part dark, so you can be able to get that stab bonus in there. So that's the good thing about 
the Dark Pulse variant of Hydra. And then you have Dragon Pulse. Dragon Pulse is good for targets, Dragonite, Salamance, Garchomp, implying that you predict them on the Switch, or Kingdra, for example. You think, oh, this is a good turn for Kingdra to come in, and then you predict Kingdra, and you do Dragon Pulse, well then you have an opportunity to knock out Kingdra. So there are a lot of different targets you can address with Dragon Pulse, and you can also hit neutrally with a lot of other targets as well, and those targets do take a lot of damage from Dragon Pulse, so Dragon Pulse is a very menacing attack from Hydreigon, especially coming from that 125 base special attack. And then you have U-Turn. U-Turn, even though it's a physical attacking move, this is an out for Hydreigon. So let's just say you're in an unfavorable position a Conkeldor or a Nimininshao. Those Pokemon you can use U-Turn if you can predict them on the Switch, and then you can go into something a little safer. This is Hydreigon's way of escaping the fight if it needs to. So it's good to give Hydreigon that out, especially if it's the Hydra's Choice Assault variant of Hydreigon. Yeah, there are two moves you can pick. You can either pick Flamethrower or Focus Blast. It depends on what target you want to go for. Are you worried about something like Skymery or Caesar or Ferrothorn or Excadrill? If you are, then Flamethrower would be the move that you can go for. Or Focus Blast. So are you worried about Ansi or Blissey and you're the Choice Specs variant? Are you worried about Tyranitar? Because Tyranitar boosts its special defense when it's in the Sandstorm. So you can go for Focus Blast there as well, and you can address Tyranitar. So it just depends on what you want your Hydreigon to handle, and that is why I have Flamethrower or Focus Blast for the fourth move slot. And now that we've discussed Hydra's Choice Assault, let's say you don't want to be locked in a Choice Scarf or a Choice Specs. You can also go for the Bulky Dragon, which is also a common variant. And the IVs are HP, plus 25, attack doesn't matter, defense is plus 25, special attack is 31, special defense is plus 25, and speed is 31. Its EVs are 6 HP, 252 special attack, and 252 speed. Its nature is timid, so plus speed, minus attack. And its moves are Taunt, Roost, Dark Pulse, or Dragon Pulse, and Flamethrower. Its item is Leftovers, and its ability is Levitate. All right, we discussed Dark Pulse and Dragon Pulse and Flamethrower, but let's go and discuss the first two moves here. Let's go and start with Roost. Roost helps you recover a certain amount of health, and this is good especially if you want to stall out Pokemon like Blissey or Chansey. You can stall them out because you use the first move on Chansey or Blissey, and that move is Taunt. And what that move does is it shuts down Blissey or Chansey from using Toxic. This is good because Hydreigon is faster than Blissey and Chansey. Hydreigon can outspeed both Chansey and Blissey, use Taunt, and then just continually hit Chansey or Blissey with the Dragon Pulses or Dark Pulses. And all Chansey can really do is Seismic Toss. But that's not really going to do much to Hydreigon because Hydreigon can roost after a certain amount of turns. So Hydreigon can win the stall fight against Chansey or Blissey with this variant. So the bulky dragon is quite a menacing dragon against Chansey or Blissey, which Chansey and Blissey are oftentimes the common answer that a lot of people have for Hydreigon. The bulky dragon is a very dangerous set for Chansey or Blissey to encounter. The fun does not end. There is a third variant for Hydreigon, the subplot Hydreigon, which is the most common out of all the Hydreigons. That what are the specifications for a subplot Hydreigon? So HP is 25 plus, attack doesn't really matter, defense is plus 25, special attack is 31, special defense is plus 25, and its speed is 31. Its EVs are 6 HP, 252 special attack, 252 speed. Its nature is timid, so plus speed minus attack. And its moves are substitute nasty plot, dragon pulse, or dark pulse, and flamethrower. Its item is leftovers, and its ability is levitate. I should mention, that for the bulky dragon and for the subplot hydra, the reason why you want lefties is because you recover gradually and it does help you win several stall wars. But for the third variant, the reason why you want leftovers is not only that you can win stall wars, but you can also win in terms of recovering your health 
so you can make another substitute. This set is easily defeated by using Toxic. So if you have a faster Pokemon that can adorn the move Toxic, then you can use it on Hydreigon and then they can defeat Subplot Hydra. Although be careful of your opponent's Aromatherapy, Blissey, or the Heal Bell, Umbreon. So be careful of those Pokemon if you see them. Speaking about Substitute, Nasty Plot. Nasty Plot is a move that boosts your special attack stat by plus two, which is good for your special attacking moves, and it does threaten Chansey and Blissey. And then you have the Substitute. Substitute is a move you can use some of your own HP to put a little teddy bear beside your Pokemon. What the teddy bear does is that it takes the brunt of all the hits. Now, there is an exception here. If your opponent were to use Bug Buzz or multi-hit moves, then you can be affected after substitute. So the multi-hit moves can break the substitute, and then you get to take the brunt of the move even further after the substitute, which is what makes the place here so deadly. I should note that moves like Bug Buzz, you don't even need to break the sub. You can just go past the substitute and hit the Pokemon. So there are two moves that I'm aware of that go past the substitute, and those two moves are Bug Buzz and Hyper Voice. So be careful when you see Pokemon that have those two moves. All right, so those three sets that I mentioned are the three most common variants for Hydreigon. Now it's time for me to discuss the rare variants for Hydreigon. The very first variant that you see here, you rarely see it, but I believe it's worth mentioning because you still might see it from time to time. So let's go ahead and read this rare variant right now. So the first variant is the mixed heads. And the IVs are HP plus 25, attack is 31, defense is plus 25, special attack is 31, special defense is plus 25, and the speed is 31. Its EVs are 6 HP, 252 special attack, 252 speed. Its nature is naive, so plus speed minus special defense, and its moves are Dragon Pulse, Flamethrower, U-Turn, and Super Power. Its item is Choice Scarf or Life Orb, and its ability is Levitate. Alright, Life Orb is an item that is going to cost a little bit of some of your HP, but you do hit a little harder with some moves. So, Life Orb is a worthy investment for some Pokemon, especially Infernape, and this particular variant for Hydra God. You may have noticed that I have read a physical move, Super Power. So why do you want to have Super Power on Hydreigon? Before Nasty Plot was given to Hydreigon, people would use Super Power to address Blissey or Tyranitar. Super Power would help Hydreigon with its physical attacking prowess. And nowadays you don't really need Super Power on Hydreigon anymore, now you can just run the Timid variant with Nasty Plot Focus Blast if you want to handle Blissey or Tyranitar. Super Power is a hard-hitting fighting type move which lowers down the attack and defense of the Pokemon. But the reason why I mention it here is because you might see it at times in PvP, even though it's not too common, but there are some people that still run it, because there are some people that find value in the Mixed Heads variant for Hydra. So that's why I felt it was worth mentioning, and Spartacus GD thought it was worth mentioning as well. But Spartacus GD wanted me to make this point here, that he does not suggest that you build this particular variant for Hydreigon because this particular variant is an outdated Hydreigon. And the very last variant for Hydreigon is Hydra's Bad Singing. And its IVs are HP plus 25, its attack doesn't really matter, defense is plus 25, special attack is 31, special defense is plus 25, and speed is 31. Its EVs are 6 HP, 252 special attack, 252 speed, its nature is timid, so plus speed minus attack, and its moves are Hyper Voice, Dragon Pulse, or Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, and U-Turn. Its item is either a Choice Specs or a Choice Scarf, and its ability is Levitate. And now let's go ahead and discuss Hyper Voice. Hyper Voice, just like Bug Buzz, is a move that goes past the substitute and hits the Pokemon. And this is good for if you're in a situation where Breloom is behind a substitute and is ready to charge his punch, you can have an answer to Breloom and you can use 
Hyper Voice and you can make Breloom lose concentration even though it is behind a substitute. Hyper Voice is Hydreigon's way out of dealing with the Focus Punch. I should mention Hyper Voice is a very powerful special attacking normal type attack. So Hyper Voice is worth the investment if you are concerned about sub punch for you. All right, so let's go ahead and close out the slide here. And this is a relatively short video compared to the other competitive analysis. This is due to Hydreigon being a straightforward Pokemon. It's a special attacking Pokemon, just like Gengar is a special attacking Pokemon. The only difference between Hydreigon and Gengar is that Gengar is a little bit more of a glass cannon, and Hydreigon does have a little bit more bulk, but you still need to be relatively careful as to how you use it. And I should note that you may not want to put Hydreigon in front of something like a Conkeldor or an Infernape, especially in front of an Infernape, because a close combat, that'll just shut the lights out on Hydreigon. So you need to be very careful when you use Hydreigon, but when you have enough boost behind you, then essentially Hydreigon can dominate the field. Now, before I dive into Blue Nose's breeding tool and show you how to use it, as I do for most of these competitive analysis videos, I would like to say something here about the slides. So Spartacus GD, when he was making these moves, he didn't really put Surf in there. And I agree with him. It addresses some threats, but not really enough to warrant it being added into the move pool. So that is why I did not add Surf in the move pool. If you're going to use Hydreigon in a PvE type environment, then Surf is great. In the competitive scene, opt for a better move. There are so many Pokemon that can brush off Hydreigon Surf. Yeah, you can address Gliscor, but most of Hydreigon's moves can address Gliscor. So that's not really saying too much. Same for Excadrill. Because Excadrill, you can address Excadrill by using Flamethrower on it. You don't need Surf. Why would you want to use Surf if you can opt for better moves? And besides, Hippo can't really do anything to you, since Hippo usually only has Earthquake and that's it. You can use Dark Pulses, get some flinches on Hippo, and then you can knock it out. So you don't really need Surf to address Hippodon. Alright, and before I sign out here, I would like to mention Blue Nose's Egg Move tool. And I should note that Hydreigon has a very special egg move, which is Head Smash. Not really good for the PvP scene, but hey, if you want to breed a Hydreigon for a friend of yours, and if you want your Hydreigon to stick out, well then I would say that Head Smash does the job quite well. In that. Head Smash would be the move to breed on, although I would say that your Hydreigon should be a naive nature since this Hydreigon would be ran typically as mixed. If you were to breed Head Smash on your Hydreigon, that is how you would breed it. And on that note, anyways, this is the Roy Rogers News Channel. Don't forget to comment and subscribe to our channel, like the content that you see here. And this is the Roy Rogers News Channel signing off. Fast, accurate, unbiased. Roy Rogers News.